Welcome to the Loving Support WIC Peer Counselor Training Program for WIC Managers, Coordinators, and Supervisors. This training has been developed through a cooperative agreement between the USDA Food and Nutrition Service and Every Mother Inc. It is designed to help state and local WIC agencies implement and sustain successful peer counseling programs that help participants in the special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children receive the help they need to reach their breastfeeding goals. The training program for WIC peer counseling program managers, coordinators, and supervisors provides program guidance based on the FNS loving support model research on the evidence behind peer counseling, best practices adopted by state and local WIC agencies across the country, and solutions to address common challenges. State and local agency showcases are also included to highlight successful strategies. The curriculum is divided into 10 major sections. Each section is important for training new managers and for staff in existing programs to assure continued best practices in program management. Each section has an accompanying notebook and handouts. Feedback from participants during in-person training indicated the notebook was an extremely valuable resource. Both the notebook and handouts are accessible on the Maryland WIC SharePoint website. Please print each notebook section in the handouts prior to viewing the webinars so that you can follow along take notes, and reference handouts as they are discussed. Welcome to Section 3, Program Logistics. Successful peer counseling programs do not just happen. They occur when state and local agencies plan for success by assembling a supportive team and fashioning a program that addresses the needs of WIC mothers and support of peer counselors. This section provides options for assuring that program builds on best practices of WIC agencies. At the end of this webinar, WIC managers will be able to identify at least three factors integral to the success of implementing and sustaining a breastfeeding peer counseling program in WIC, identify considerations in expanding existing peer counseling programs. Successful peer counseling programs must be initiated and sustained with intention. This happens when state and local agencies plan for success by assembling a supportive team to address the needs of WIC mothers and peer counselors. State agencies are required to develop implementation plans demonstrating how all of the components of the loving support model are in place in each peer counseling program. Local agencies who are beginning a new peer counseling program or those with existing programs will find this webinar useful as a part of a periodic review of their program. This section examines best practices for a successful program, including conducting a needs assessment to identify gaps in services within WIC and the community, building buy-in from the WIC team, from administrators and local agencies, and establishing and sustaining a management model that will most likely build a successful program. The loving support model states programs must have designated breastfeeding peer counseling program managers and or coordinators at state and or local level. A designated position means that positions are designed with specific responsibilities for program oversight. The staff in those positions are responsible for that oversight. The roles and responsibilities, as well as qualifications for state and local agency peer counselor coordinators are outlined in the Nutrition Services Standards. In webinar one, we shared the list of characteristics of successful peer counseling programs. Many of those characteristics are part of the roles and responsibilities outlined for both state and local positions. State level position roles include establishing program goals and objectives, 
establishing breastfeeding peer counseling program policies and procedures consistent with the loving support model, providing guidance and technical assistance to local agencies to ensure they meet program goals and follow established policies and procedures, and allocating funding for local agency peer counseling program activities. Local agency position roles include implementing the program according to the goals and objectives established, conducting a needs assessment to identify gaps in breastfeeding resources and services that the peer counseling program can address, overseeing the training of peer counselors and supervisors, mentoring and supervising peer counselors, and coordinating with community stakeholders such as hospitals, healthcare providers, and other community groups or organizations. How much time is needed for local managers to run a peer counseling program? We will address this in more detail in webinar nine, mentoring and supervising peer counselors. In short, the best answer is the amount of time needed is going to vary from agency to agency depending on the following factors the number of peer counselors being supervised, the size of the geographic area covered, the breastfeeding rates in your local agency, the types of contacts your peer counselors make, and more we will cover in the later webinar. After viewing these webinars, we encourage local agency coordinators to talk with their peer counselor coordinators about the amount of time they feel is required to perform their management duties while taking into account these factors. The State WIC office provides the overarching support for the peer counseling program by establishing designated positions. It provides overall program oversight, provides support and guidance to local agencies, allocates funding, and establishes standardized policies. In Maryland WIC, our state office provides oversight to assure that funding is used appropriately, that the loving support model is being followed, and that local agencies have the support they need to address concerns that arise in order to run successful peer counseling programs. The loving, mo the loving support model states, establishment of standardized breastfeeding peer counseling program policies and procedures at the state and local level as part of agency nutrition education plan and training of appropriate WIC state and local peer counseling managers, supervisors, and clinic staff using FNS loving support peer counselor curricula. How does the state office support the local agency peer counseling programs? by establishing state program policies and procedures that align with the loving support model. This includes job descriptions, career path options, staffing and referral protocols, documentation and reporting procedures, and monitoring and evaluation. By assisting local agencies with establishing and sustaining policies that align with the nutrition services standards, state agency policies, and the loving support model and monitoring programs to assure compliance. By assuring that local agency program managers and supervisors are fully trained in effective use of the FNS loving support peer counselor curriculum. By helping to plan, expand, and sustain peer counseling programs in WIC. Through sharing best practices from other agencies within the state and facilitating mentoring and networking between agencies. By giving guidance on how to budget for a peer counseling program, including allowable costs and realistic projections of program costs. By securing and providing funding and peer counselor program materials. By supporting and guiding WIC staff who want to become lactation experts through training and mentoring opportunities by providing guidance on contact guidelines for peer counselors, assistance in determining appropriate caseload size and scope of practice. 
As an IBCLC, the State Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program Coordinator is available for technical support. Through troubleshooting concerns that may arise, by establishing a standardized training program for peer counselors based on the FNS Loving Support Curricula that is evidence-based, user-friendly, and grounded in the practical strategies needed by peer counselors to do their job. Through monitoring the program budget, providing data systems management, and generating program reports when appropriate. The local agency role includes establishing and following program policies and practices that align with the loving support model, designating personnel to coordinate the program and supervise peer counselors, identifying a WIC designated breastfeeding expert for each local agency or clinic if necessary due to population and or geographic size, to address breastfeeding issues that are beyond the scope of practice of the peer counselors. Promoting the program with WIC participants and throughout the community. Recruiting and hiring staff that meets the FNS definition of a peer counselor. Providing day-to-day -day supervision of peer counselors. Reporting data required by the state. Engaging community partners performing other duties required to manage the program. Our local agencies with peer counseling programs designate a peer counselor coordinator. This person is most often the local agency breastfeeding coordinator or nutritionist with extra breastfeeding training or a lactation consultant. In larger agencies, the program coordinator provides oversight of program activities throughout the agency, which may include multiple clinics. Some of our agencies have hired contract IBCLCs for a limited number of hours per week. If this person is also designated to coordinate the peer counseling program, the local agency needs to assure that they are able to remain in close touch with the program to support the goals and needs of the agency. This will require excellent communication between the local agency coordinator, the peer counselor coordinator, the peer counselors, and the local agency staff. Most WIC agencies believe it is crucial to build buy-in and support from local WIC staff before launching a new peer counseling program. The following are recommended discussion points with local agency officials and staff. The importance of peer counseling in increasing breastfeeding rates and providing WIC participants with social support. Ways to support peer counselors so they remain engaged and enthusiastic about their job. Federal and state requirements, including the loving support model state and local agency or clinic policies that will help assure program success, methods for assuring that peer counselors are paid in a timely manner. The State Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program Coordinator is available to assist local agencies with barriers they might have in either beginning or continuing their programs, including concerns over continued funding, lack of staff for administering the program, lack of knowledge about program practices that will be most effective, need for approval from county commissioners or the boards of health, including what information to share, funding issues and expectations regarding county financial support, lack of comfort with and knowledge about supervision of paraprofessional staff, and lack of buy-in from local agency staff or other programs that work with WIC. This management curriculum has a PowerPoint presentation for local agency staff pictured here entitled Peer Counseling Making a Difference for WIC Families. <clears throat> this can be used to help address some of these concerns. Please reach out to the state office for assistance in using this presentation. An important reminder for local agency staff, breastfeeding peer counseling programs assist local agency staff by expanding, by expanding breastfeeding services. 
WIC participants are the beneficiaries of these expanded services and enjoy a greater level of customer satisfaction. This will reflect positively on the entire WIC clinic. WIC agencies with successful peer counseling programs recommend the following practices when launching a new program. Share successful best practices of other agencies within the state. Mentoring is also effective in assisting new agencies with learning from successful programs. Our biannual peer counselor coordinator meetings provide opportunities for sharing and mentoring. Local agencies should approach upper management first to gain buy-in. Allow the upper management enthusiasm to trickle down to local staff. Discuss the history of success with peer counseling. See previous webinars for details to share. Recognize that training is critical. Local agency peer counseling program managers and supervisors should be trained. Local agency staff should also be trained to build in and address barriers. Maryland WIC has created these webinars to assist local agencies in training their staff. The State Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program Coordinator is available to assist your agency with any questions or concerns you may have. Understand that it takes time to build success. Be patient and talk with other agencies operating peer counseling programs to learn from their successes. Finally, watch the program and your staff blossom. Many peer counselors go on to become peer counselor coordinators, breastfeeding coordinators, WIC nutritionists, IBCLCs, RNs, and other staff who support WIC mothers. An important part of the planning and sustaining process is conducting a needs assessment. Within this assessment, Consider staff needs, available resources, needs of WIC participants, and gaps in services within both WIC and the community your agency serves. A needs assessment will provide an inventory of available resources before implementing or expanding your peer counseling program. Identify needs and gaps in services and resources and provide evaluation standards to determine program success. In preparing a needs assessment, consider the following. Identify needs of the target population of WIC mothers. This may include transportation issues that make it difficult for peer counselors and participants to connect or common breastfeeding problems. Assess general community support and resources. This may include hospital practices, availability of IBCLCs, healthcare providers, breastfeeding coalitions, support groups, classes, and community hotlines. This may also include examining the level of breastfeeding support available to your WIC clients who participate in other programs, such as home visiting, early head start, or infants and toddlers, for example. Consider availability of baseline data that can be used to evaluate the program's success at the state and local levels. This includes breastfeeding initiation and duration data that is state, county, and agency specific. Some of our local agencies have asked how they can prioritize peer counseling program activities and contacts with new mothers when funding is limited. Programs must have all components of the loving support model in place to ensure an effective program, even though the number of women they can reach or the length of time services are provided may be smaller. Prioritizing contacts is one way to address this. Providing peer counseling services where participants need it the most, such as the third trimester of pregnancy and the first month after birth is one strategy. We will address this specifically in webinar six, scope of practice with more information about ideal contact guidelines and ways to make the program more efficient to serve the largest number of participants possible. The peer counseling program should be viewed in light of the overall comprehensive breastfeeding support program within the agency so that services are part of a coordinated approach. 
We will not be covering budget details in this webinar series. Please refer to the most recent allowable cost document for details on allowable expenditures using breastfeeding peer counselor funds. For more detailed questions, please contact the State Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program Coordinator and the State Finance Unit. Peer counselors hired must meet the loving support model definition. We will cover this in depth in webinar five, staffing considerations. Some of our local agencies have questions about dual role staff. FNS guidance states that peer counselors may not perform non-breastfeeding related activities. A dual role po position is permissible only if the staff person meets the definition of a peer counselor in the loving support model, including being available to participants outside of regular WIC hours. Breastfeeding peer counseling funds may be used only for the portion of time spent as peer counselors. Breastfeeding promotion, encouragement, and support is part of every WIC staff member's job description, and this does not count as peer counseling. We will explore this in more depth in the next webinar, Policies and Operations. Feedback from successful programs indicates that their peer counseling programs function best when peer counselors are allowed to solely dedicate their time to peer counselor support for breastfeeding. Local agencies are encouraged to contact the State Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program Coordinator regarding dual role questions. Policies for dual role peer counseling staff must be approved by the FNS Regional Office. Liability describes legal responsibility to another person because of one's actions or failure to act appropriately. Liability policies for WIC agencies may or may not include coverage for such things as hospital or home visits. Some agencies have found that the hospital provides liability coverage for peer counselors as part of their established volunteer program. Other hospitals may require proof of liability coverage by WIC before peer counselors can provide services in the hospital. Peer counselor program managers and supervisors should identify the liability policies unique to your local agency by contacting the state finance unit. Many WIC agencies have found that liability concerns are not insurmountable if peer counselors work within their defined scope of practice, have access to and make appropriate referrals to designated breastfeeding experts for situations that occur beyond their scope of practice, and receive close supervision and mentoring from supervisors. Ways to reduce the risk of liability include, communicate job expectations clearly to peer counselors, including conduct with clients, both within and outside the WIC clinic. Implement appropriate training of peer counselors, including initial training and regular ongoing training. Train peer counselors and supervisors on the scope of practice for peer counselors and situations that require referral. Provide structured referral protocols for peer counselors to WIC designated breastfeeding experts to handle referrals for situations that are beyond their training and scope of practice. Provide designated supervisors who have ded dedicated time to provide regular systematic contacts with peer counselors. Provide ongoing guidance and supervision to ensure that peer counselors operate strictly within the program's identified scope of practice. Create a system to regularly monitor participant contacts and counseling given. Maintain accurate records of all client contacts. Require peer counselors to sign a confidentiality statement. This will be discussed in more detail in Section 4, Policies and Operations. 
and review confidentiality practices and scope of practice regularly at staff meetings. Webinar 6, Scope of Practice, will cover all of this information in more detail. Ongoing needs assessments are crucial to the success of your peer counseling program. State and local WIC agencies should routinely collect data from WIC participants to assure that the program is meeting their needs. Feedback should also be collected from local agency staff and peer counselors to identify program needs and successes. Questions about the program can be added to standard participant surveys or be implemented as part of a separate program survey. Local agency staff feedback can guide agencies in making staffing and expansion decisions, as well as identifying best practices and lessons learned. At each of our statewide in-person peer counselor meetings, we solicit feedback and plan future meetings based on this feedback. Peer counselors are more engaged and invested in programs they help design and create. This, dis this decreases staff turnover by keeping job satisfaction high. This concludes Section 3, Program Logistics. Please, con con please continue on to Section 4, Policies and Operations.